would like to briefly take a moment and say thank you to everyone who has continued to join us over the Florida Maquis Patreon channel. The Holy Bible teaches us, Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. If you'd like to join us over there, it's only one U.S. dollar per month at the base level, and even less than that if you sign up for an entire year, and no matter what level you choose, it's fully refundable. First 90 days, no questions asked. What's the difference between YouTube and Patreon? At Patreon, we can take the gloves off. There are no censors. We have, of course, the Patreon firewall, and then we also have Vimeo that we're partnering with, and that gives us one extra layer of protection where we can speak our minds and we can take advantage of rights that we used to enjoy in this country freely. Would love to have you over there. There are hundreds of exclusive videos never before seen here on YouTube. Please, if you have the ability, would love to have you over there. You won't regret it. God bless all of you, and thank you so much. Two things that science will never explain are religion and art. Regardless of your opinion on either one, they are beyond the realm of mathematics, physics, and all of the what they call hard sciences. Also, if we are ever going to have a moment of disclosure, historically known as revelation, it isn't going to come from government, and it isn't going to come from the wealthy. It's not going to come from people in positions of authority. Just this one picture from this 15th century map of Patagonia speaks volumes, and it was simply artistic. Here be a land of giants. And if you were going to venture to the region, you know, all of these little tiny rivers on the way, okay, might be of some interest, but this would be kind of a big thing, pardon the, uh, the pun, to look out for. Also, someone took the time to make this image. It was such a profound experience that they took the time to create artwork. And artwork like this speaks more to us now, 500 years later, than any old inaccurate map. Because we don't see creatures like this in the modern day. We do see things like this, though. And while science would roundly dismiss it, when we look at history, it's not the government-approved history books that tell us the truth, is it? It's the books that they don't want anyone reading. It's why I have suggested that there's another channel out here on YouTube that is absolutely one of the best, and it's Atlantean Gardens, a man named Robert Sepper, S-E-P-E-H-R. He recently put out one, I think just in the last week or so, that is just an absolutely stunning documentary of information historical that most people have never heard. But this tool, Google Earth Pro, I'll be very honest with you, I don't think the creators of this, they're basically in this particular sense just aggregators of information, that they know what they have. Because if they did, we wouldn't see it. Some of these things take very, let me see if I can say this better, some of these images I have spent hours and hours and hours finding. The allegation from my trolls that the vast majority of Antarctica is wind, ice, rock, and snow, they're absolutely right. I just don't share all of that. I don't share all of the time. You know, days sometimes go by, I don't find a single thing of note, but once in a while, you come across something like this, this unmistakable shape of a giant skull just laying on the ice. And it makes it all worth it. It really does, because then I can share it with you guys, and you can go get Google Earth Pro for yourself. You can download it to your own device, 
I give you the coordinates. You can go get whatever device you want and look at this and make up your own mind. No one has to take my word for it. I'm going to go ahead and measure this. And the reason I led with the pictures that I did is that it's immense. It is absolutely immense. And I think a better way to measure this is using a circle as opposed to just a line so we can get an idea of how big a round this is. Basically, the radius is 24 feet of this round skull. So then you can extrapolate how big this individual must have been. And it does seem, and I'm sure a lot of you have seen this, that there is some type of an elongation in the back here. Very near to it, it looks like this could par possibly be part of a rib cage or a spine. I'm not sure exactly if this is just a grave that has been disturbed, but whatever it is, it's a giant opening in the ice, a giant field that has collapsed, and there are so many things in this that are uh, inexplicable to just wind, ice, rock, and snow. It's just beyond anything that you could ever imagine down here. Some things that I found I haven't shared because I can't describe them. I mean, I know they're not natural, but there's no way I can I could find words for them. They're just that insane. Some people have made the allegation that all I'm seeing is shadow. Well, they're partially right with that, for sure, because some of these shadows couldn't be explained by simple, like for example here. Now, we know that as the day gets long and into the evening that the shadows extend and make things seem much larger than they are, but it doesn't change their shape. It just elongates the features that are already there. So when I see stuff like this, on a basically ice sandblasted tundra that's supposedly negative 25 degrees, you just have to ask, how could this possibly exist? Many people ask, why didn't you mention this? You went right by it. Why didn't you mention that? If I mentioned everything, we'd be here for an hour. And for those of you that have asked about time limits, you know, I get all sorts of uh, information about um, demographics and how long people stick with videos. Right now we're at the seven minute mark. This is about the extent to which most people watch. My average view is about six and a half to seven minutes. So that's why I don't really try to go beyond 10 or 15 minutes at the most. Now, real quick here, I, you know, the first thing I think people would look at is they'd go, wow, look at the two eyes on the giant frog. But I start talking about giant frogs in Antarctica, you know, and then people just are like, you know, you got to be on some kind of drugs. But once again, look at it for yourself. Make up your own mind. How could this possibly be? Just wind, ice, rock, and snow. And I'll measure this for you real quick, too. We will use uh, a line to measure this. Just, I mean, whatever this is, it's 128 feet long. It could be a giant statue of one. I mean, that would make sense to me. I very much doubt there are 128-foot frogs in Antarctica. But barring any other explanation, given the amount of things we've found, I'm not sure how anyone could allege that it's all just uh, poor camera work or uh, shadow and light just working on things in a strange way. The reason I was even in this region to begin with was about a month ago, about a month and a half, I showed this image, and it was one of the more difficult ones to show because you had to have the light just right. But it shows what looks like a gray alien with the elongated skull basically looking up at the camera. 
And I'm going to try to lighten this up as much as I can here without. There it is. And I enhanced the image and I used it for a thumbnail so that people could see it. Well, I found another one in just about the same dimensions in an entirely different region. And this is over in the Mertz Nenis Valley where we have found so many things. And if it's not that, if it's not an actual living creature, once again, I make the allegation that it could be, sorry about the light there, some type of statue or veneration. And this is where the whole religion part of the art and religion argument come in. Because when artists see things or experience things, or people in general, I guess, they find ways to um, memorialize. Now, we have smartphones, and we can take pictures of anything just at a moment's notice now. So we don't have to go through all the machinations that people used to have to in antiquity if they wanted to remember something. They needed to create some type of artificial um, remembrance. Some people were, uh, they put ink to canvas. Some people sculpted. Some people did metalwork. You know, some people created languages. Some created religions. And this is, I think, what we're seeing the remnants of down here. And above this is a very mermaidish like image. I'm not sure if that's exactly what it is, but I did find another location where it looks a whole lot like in the back part of this cave, someone might have made homage to, or who knows, maybe it's a real one, to a mermaid. Now, not to be too overly graphic or descriptive, but basically the head is here. The mermaid is facing to the left. This is her back arched here. This is where her stomach would be. Arms down here. And this is back where the fin or whatever you want to call it would be. Now, like I said, let me be very clear. Probably just a statue or an image. But this is how we will have disclosure when we get it. It will be through art or religion. There's going to be no press conference. I guarantee it. You know, you see creations like this in the snow. There's really no way you could make the allegation that that's just, you know, the way snow behaves all by itself. And up here, I've made this allegation about these things being caves. You can see the pillars they've created. And if you look at the old pictures, well, not old pictures, but pictures of salt mines in Missouri and in the Midwest, how they create the supports down there digging through the salt, this looks exactly like one. And back here in the shadow, we've got the head of some kind of a four-legged creature. Head, body, legs. I mean, the imagery just goes on and on and on. And I think that was one more thing I wanted to show you guys before we get out of here. The allegation about shadows. All right. Now, looking at it this way, you could make the allegation. Here is a human, shield, two legs, walking, perhaps wearing a helmet. Now... I know many of you are from northern regions that have experience with ice and snow. If it's a sunny day and you're next to a giant snow-covered hill, the sun will cast a reflection, not a reflection, but it'll cast a shadow, you know, 180 degrees from where it is in front of you. So if you would turn around and put the sun directly to your back, the shadow would, of course, be in front of you, right? Well, let's say the hill was off to your left. The sun, bouncing off of all of that white, 
would also then reflect a shadow off to your right. So you would see a larger shadow and then you would see a fainter shadow. Well, it's almost like that's what's happening here. Because when you flip this around, look at this. We have another image here. And then we have something that's very, for lack of a better term, serpent-like and carved. Whatever angle you look at this from, there's zero allegation that this is natural. The shapes of the, uh, the entryways into these caves are just beyond coincidence. And for me, this is the kind of stuff, like right here, that I think honestly is going to be the big smoking gun. Because you can go look at people anywhere, at the beach or any tourist attraction, and go zoom in on them using Google Earth Pro, and look at what the shadows look like of people, known people in your town or any town USA. And then go compare them to this. Virtually identical in just about every single way. And I guess I will just leave it there. I could go on and on and on and on in this particular region to show all sorts of different things. But I will leave it there. Um, like, share, subscribe. Let me go back to the uh, original biggest find here just to leave out with that. There's no mistaking this skull. Like, share, subscribe. Hot time, 12 o'clock and 6 miles. What is this tack they're looking for anyway? It's some kind of weapon left by the ancients. The kind that decides who wins the war. Have Moloch's warriors been here before? I don't like the look of this. That was above and beyond. Isn't the Lambda site off-world, sir? I found a couple of more cables down here in South America, cable tunnel structures, whatever you want to call them. In an earlier video, I had mentioned that there was a structure up here in what we call the Antarctica Peninsula, near this area by Argentina. I had made the allegation that looks like at some point there was a bridge between these two areas, and that something happened and water broke through some type of a dam and completely changed the landscape here. You can see that you know this area curves. Sorry about that. This area curves this way, and this area curves that way, as if the water pushed through. And when you look over here, you see evidence here that that might have been the case. Well, out of all of the cable structures and tunnel structures that I have found in Antarctica, and they're marked up by these red lines, they all either run exactly east-west, 90 to 270, or 0 to 90 degrees, or pardon me, 0 to 180 degrees, except for these two cable structures up here, they're off by a full five degrees clockwise. Meaning that would mean these structures were, were built before this event happened. And as a result of, of this event, they've been turned. 
and I'll link this for you. I'll show you where the uh, coordinates are for the beginning and ending. I have these marked out here in purple. There's two of them that run parallel. Now, in an earlier video, I had uncovered this thing called an artificial platform and had described it as um, diving board, uh, tongue depressor. Well, someone actually took the advice that I used and looked at it from a different aspect, a different perspective, and said, that's a ship. And I'm like, wait a minute, how is it a ship? Well, watch this. If you change your perspective and you look at it like this, this absolutely looks like the bow of a ship. It even looks like at one time it might have had that infamous bulbous bow structure down here. This looks like the front end of some type of an aircraft carrier. It really does, an ancient style of aircraft carrier. You know, here is the, the bow right here. And when you look down here, it comes down and it makes a curve here. And we've seen so many pictures of the uh, um, the accident with the ACX Crystal and the Fitzgerald and that infamous um, bulbous bow structure. This looks exactly like the bow of a ship uncovering. I wish I would have had the forethought to bring up the comment of who that was, but whoever that was, you know, I'm sure you'll be able to find it. Um, not taking credit for having discovered this aspect of this myself, but it very does, it very much does look like the bow of a ship. And we've made the allegation, of course, before that this was a seafaring nation, a seafaring society, whoever this was, um, by other things that we found. And this is just more evidence of that, that they had large ships and they understood how um, plying the waves works because you can see it. You can see it in the design of their ships. So I will once again give you the coordinates for this. I have it labeled artificial platform because I was looking at it from this perspective and I hadn't zoomed all the way around it. So there's also this and a couple of newer things that I have found that I wanted to share with you guys. And let's see if I can find them. Over here, I found another cable structure near this quote-unquote jewel-topped mountain that we've looked at so many times that has all of the different colors. It literally ran right by it. And over here, there was another structure that looked a lot like that platform. This uh, half moon area that had been cut out. And then this strange, at least from this angle, looks like diving board, tongue depressor type of shape. Very near it. I wonder if this is yet another vessel. And also, let's see if I can find, uh, there's a very large cave over here that is unmarked. And as you can see here, this clearly has evidence of transit by the change in the snow or ice or whatever you want to call it. This over here has a very distinctive shape to it, I think you will recognize. I think that's pretty clear what that is. I've labeled it Saucer Launch Bay. But at the beginning and ending of one of these cables, right here I wanted to show you something. Now I have this cable divided into two parts to show you this. On this end of where this cable ends, this, this part of the mountain, there is a giant chunk taken out of the side here. And you can see evidence of what looks like a pitch field. 
This doesn't look like an avalanche because it's too perfect. It's too cut out. It's too neat. Now, this by itself, you might be able to say, okay, well, you know, maybe it's just that part of the snow. But this is where a cable begins, right here. A cable, tunnel structure, whatever it is. And when you run to the other end of it, you find literally the same thing. You find an opening. on both ends. Right near, oh by the way, where this platform structure was. It's just very odd to have so many different things, so many odd things in close proximity to each other. Right by this jeweled top mountain. If this is evidence of mining, I think that we can uh, understand what they're doing. I did find this over here. It just seemed very odd. I hadn't seen it anywhere else occur this way. It's almost like spiked fencing, some type of a barrier. The top of a castle structure in shadow, of course. That they've kept this all blurred out up here, I think, is uh, pretty telling. So that was pretty much all the new stuff, but once again, I think uh, the idea of looking at things in perspective has allowed us to see things that weren't there before. And we'll go back to that ship real quick. See if I can find it. Hold on. There it is. With the right perspective, I think that's absolutely a ship. Would like to briefly take a moment and say thank you to everyone who has continued to join us over at the Florida Maquis Patreon channel. The Holy Bible teaches us, Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. If you'd like to join us over there, it's only one U.S. dollar per month at the base level, and even less than that if you sign up for an entire year and, no matter what level you choose, it's fully refundable. First 90 days, no questions asked. What's the difference between YouTube and Patreon? At Patreon, we can take the gloves off. There are no sensors. We have, of course, the Patreon firewall, and then we also have Vimeo that we're partnering with, and that gives us one extra layer of protection where we can speak our minds and we can take advantage of rights that we used to enjoy in this country freely. Would love to have you over there. There are hundreds of exclusive videos never before seen here on YouTube. Please, if you have the ability, would love to have you over there. You won't regret it. God bless all of you, and thank you so much.